Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will look at a text classification example using naive Bayes that also involves Laplace smoothing. So this is so you can have two different kinds of examples, one for categorical data and another one for text classification and can compare and contrast both. So for text classification, we are looking at a simple data set here. So the red table gives us the data set and we have Chinese documents and we also have Japanese documents and uh, we have words. So words are our features. So usually in categorical data, we have different kinds of features. For example, we have outlook, we have humidity, we have temperature, all those are uh, our features and the values of outlook equal to sunny is a value of that feature. But here in the text classification example, we have the words themselves as features. So here uh, the features are uh, Chinese is a feature, Beijing is a feature, Macau is a feature, Shanghai is a feature, Tokyo, Japan, all these words are features. The words themselves are features. And the classification, which language document is this, um, given by class, where class is equal to C for Chinese and class is equal to J for Japanese. Okay, so now using this training data, we are going to calculate uh, which class, the predict the class for this test example, which has the words Chinese, 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 three words Chinese in Tokyo, Japan. So it has essentially words from both these documents and we are going to see which one wins um, in, in um, this test data point. Okay, so for that first we know we have to calculate, start with calculating P of C and P of J, the two classes, right? So there are three Chinese documents and there's one Japanese document. So P of C is three by four, three Chinese by four, total number of documents. And P of J is one by four, one Japanese document out of four total documents. And next we have here, the first word is Chinese. So we are going to calculate P of Chinese given C. So we know that when the feature, we know the feature value is Chinese. We have Chinese given C and we have to also calculate P of Chinese given J, right? So both for each class value, we have to calculate that. Okay, so for P of Chinese given C, we want to count number of times Chinese occurs when the class value is C. So we count number of Chinese words, one, two, three, four, and five, right? So we have five words, five instances of the word Chinese, and we are using a Laplace smoothing of one, Laplace one smoothing, where k value equal to one. So that is given by this. Remember, we have to add k to our number, the count of each feature, right? So we are adding one to that. Now divided by we want to know for this first value here, we are going to look at total number of words across all Chinese documents. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there are total number of eight words across all three Chinese documents and that is given by this eight plus now this, for this part, we have one times, one times cardinality of X. So the cardinality is number of distinct number of words here. So Chinese is one word, Beijing is another word, 
शंघाई मकाओ टोक्यो जापान सो देर आर सिक्स यूनिक वर्ड्स अक्रॉस ऑल द फोर डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड वी मल्टीप्लाई दैट बाय वन विच इज द वैल्यू ऑफ के सो दैट इज इक्वल टू सिक्स कार्डनैलिटी ऑफ फीचर्स इज कैलकुलेटेड बाय नंबर ऑफ डिस्टिंक्ट वर्ड्स अक्रॉस ऑल आवर ट्रेनिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स and if you calculate that that comes out to be 6 over 14 so let's now look at the next one let's calculate p of chinese given j so i'm going to erase some of this just so that we have repeat this calculation okay so now we are looking at P of Chinese given J. So for P of Chinese given J, we are looking at that only Japanese document that's available to us. Document number four. Chinese occurs once. The number of times Chinese the word Chinese occurs is once. So we have one. Plus K value is one. and then total number of words in across all japanese documents there's only one document here but if we are multiple we take all words together so here in all we have three words in all Jap japanese documents and that goes here and we already calculated the next value which is k times cardinality of x so k is 1 cardinality is 6 in all across all documents and we get 2 over 9 now let's do one more we want to do let's say we want to calculate p of tokyo given c so one word from chinese document and one word from Japanese document. So Tokyo is more likely to occur in a Japanese document, right? So let's see how many how we can calculate that. And we have we have zero occurrences of the word Tokyo across all Chinese documents. We don't see it at all. So that value is zero. It does not occur. So this is why we need Laplace smoothing. So because across all chinese documents the word tokyo does not occur and still we want to be able to calculate a meaningful value instead of a zero so we have zero plus k is equal to 1 we add that here and total we have eight words across all chinese documents this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 right and then we have k is equal to 1 1 times cardinality of x across all documents in our entire training data set is 6 and we get 1 over 14 so 1 over 14 is a small number right so it's not zero but it is a small negligibly small number so this which is what we want to have so that we have a meaningful value that we can use to compare across other values and see if uh which comes out on top so we instead of having a zero we have a very small number so that the final when the when it is incorporated in the calculation it does not confuse the calculation and does not um confuse the prediction but still um avoids having the zero value okay so now we have all these values so when uh, for each word in our test data set for chinese for tokyo and for japan for these three words we calculated across all uh, the training using the training document we calculate p of chinese given c p of um, chinese given j so similarly p of tokyo given c p of tokyo given j p of japan given c and p of japan given j all these values we calculate similarly and 
after calculating these values, we know how to arrive at the final answer, right? So we multiply them together along with the prior values here, P of C and P of J. So P of C given D5, D5 is our document 5. D5 is, first we have, I'm going to just write this down here so you can map the values is proportional to P of C times P of Chinese given C, right? Number one. For the first word and then P of Chinese given C for the second word P of Chinese given C for the third word P of Tokyo given C P of Japan given C so P of Chinese given C occurs three times the value is 3 by 7, so 3 by 7 raised to 3. P of Tokyo given C is 1 over 14, and P of Japan given C is 1 over 14. And when you multiply all these together, you get 0 0.0003. Similarly, you can calculate for P of J given D5. Now, here we include P of J times P of Chinese given J P of Chinese given J P of Chinese given J P of Tokyo given J P of Japan given J. So this is for word number one, word number two, word number three, word number four, word number five in our test document. And we have already calculated these values and those values can just be substituted. And um, P of Chinese given J occurs three times and the value is two over nine. So that's why we have 2 over 9 raised to 3 times ta Tokyo given J is also 2 over 9 and Japan given J is also 2 over 9. So we substitute that and we also already know P of J. We substitute that. All these values are here. Now multiply them and get the final value. So with all these values now in place, now we know that Chinese given d5 is coming out to be higher so the final prediction is going to be equal to c this is our prediction